Anamorphic lenses have been out of reach for most filmmakers for nearly a century now, but over the past few years, manufacturers have been trying to bring them to the masses. First with Atlas, then it was Syro, then Bazin, and many others. But few of them offered full frame coverage until now. Earlier this year, Great Joy introduced the 50 millimeter T 2.9 with a 1.8 times squeeze. And now we have the brand new 35 millimeter T 2.9 with a 1.8 times squeeze. And they're gonna release more lenses in the lineup in the future as well. Now I'm gonna show you some B-roll footage I shot with these lenses in just a minute and a short film as well. But before that, I wanna actually take a look at the lenses themselves. First of all, the Great Joy lenses have a 1.8 times squeeze, which is incredible. And up until this point, most lenses on the market have only been 1.3 times squeeze, like the popular Cyrus, or a 1.6 times squeeze. And the squeeze ratio is really important because it's what gives you that very oval bokeh in the out of focus areas and all that really nice stretched look that comes from the squeeze. And as far as I know, Atlas Anamorphics are the only lenses on the market right now with a true two times squeeze that are in the budget range. And they're still completely out of budget for most people with each lens ranging from about nine to $10,000, which is just way too much money for me. So getting close to that with a 1.8 times squeeze at a fraction of the cost is a huge win in my opinion. Now the Great Joy Anamorphics claim to cover a full frame, which is true if you're shooting in a four thirds mode, but my FX6 and my FX3 don't have those modes. And they actually have a 35 by 24 millimeter sensor. And these lenses cover 33 by 24 millimeters. So they're just two millimeters shy of full coverage. So what that means is you'll have some vignetting on the outer edges of your image. However, this isn't a big deal to me because once the footage is de-squeezed, it's very wide. And I like to crop in some to get closer to your traditional 239 aspect ratio for standard widescreen. The lenses come in a ton of different mount options, EF, PL, E, RF, L, and micro four thirds. And now for me personally, I like to get all of mine in an EF mount because it's the easiest to adapt to any mirrorless camera body out there. So I'm not tied to just one ecosystem like Sony E-mount. Both of these lenses are only about two and a half pounds, which is great because it means you can easily use them on a gimbal, where when you compare that to the Atlas Anamorphics, they're about five pounds each and some of them up to six pounds, which not only are they a lot heavier, they're much larger. So it requires a really expensive and large gimbal like the Movi Pro. And even with that, you have to do a lot of counterbalance. The build quality of each lens is really high with them being made of a solid aluminum. They definitely feel and look really premium. They have matching 0.08 gear placement between both the new 35 millimeter and the 55 millimeter. So your follow focus lines right up again when you're doing a lens swap, which makes it really quick on set. All right, now let's take a look at some B-roll footage I shot with the new 35 millimeter Great Joy anamorphic lens and the 50 millimeter on my Sony FX3.
Hopefully you enjoyed that B-roll footage. I know it's kind of cliche footage of a model walking around, not really doing much, just playing with their hair, but I really wanted to show you how the lenses look in real life on a real person in a few different scenarios instead of just getting footage here in the studio. I've been really impressed by these lenses. They're sharp, but they render the out of focus areas in a really nice soft way. And you can see this especially around light sources. It almost looks like there's a 1 8 black pro mist filter on the lens, but when you want it, and it's really just around those extreme highlights, you can see it bloom a little bit. And it's just kind of soft around these headlights and these lights, you can really see it. When it comes to lens flares, they're actually pretty subtle unless you're looking directly at a rather hard light source like the sun or a spotlight. And I like this because you don't get flares and streaks at every single light source. Whereas with some other anamorphic lenses and filters that I've used, they flare over the smallest little things and it can make the footage look way over stylized or make it even unusable. So I really like how well controlled the lens flares are on these lenses. It keeps them more subtle and not just over the top. You can order the lenses with a blue or amber coating so your lens flares match that. And I prefer blue because it's more typical for what you see with the anamorphics. And honestly, I just really like the look. The lenses have a 270 degree focus throw and it's very smooth and makes getting your focus really precise. Now the 35 millimeter and the 50 millimeter both have a minimum focus distance of two feet and three inches, which I thought worked really well and allowed me to get pretty close up to my subject and still have them framed up and in focus. Now, as you probably know, anamorphic lenses are just not optically made to focus extremely close up for macro shots. I was trying to think of some cons or issues with these lenses and to be honest, I really couldn't think of any. I really like shooting with these. The image is absolutely beautiful. If I had to pinpoint something just to nitpick, I would say that I would like them to go a little bit more wide open than T 2.9. But honestly, even that wasn't a problem because I shot an entire short film at night, pretty much in the complete dark, and they still held up really well, especially when you're using something like a Sony FX3 or FX6 where you can just boost the ISO. And most cameras nowadays, you can boost the ISO really high without getting a ton of noise or gain. So even that is not really a problem. Now let's talk about price. And this is where the Great Joy anamorphic lenses really stand out. Each lens is about $1,500 US, which in my opinion is an absolute steal for anamorphic lenses, especially ones with a 1.8 times squeeze factor that cover full frame. There's just nothing else on the market that costs this little and have the same specs. I know $1,500 still isn't cheap for a lens, but if you're wanting to get into shooting anamorphic, and I highly recommend it because it's just beautiful, these are absolutely the most affordable and a great investment when compared to other similar lenses. So if you're interested in picking up the new 35 millimeter or the 50 millimeter, definitely check out the link in the description below. And I wanna say a thanks to Great Joy for sending these out for review. They didn't pay me to say any of this, and these are all the opinions of my own. All right guys, if you wanna see more videos like this, Hit subscribe right now and I'll see you in the next video.